video we are going to, at long last, start stringing together some chords to create a progression. This is going to be what we call a diatonic chord progression, that is to say it will use chords from within one key. We will not be changing key, we will not have chords that are colorful chords that are outside of the key. That will come down the road. Right now we're just going to use chords from within one key. We're going to move logically from one chord to the next, to the next, to the next. And in class, you will be developing your own chord progressions based upon the diatonic chords that are available to you in any given key. And we'll talk about that. For now, we're going to limit ourselves to root position chords. In a couple of videos, we'll be looking at some cases where we will be mixing it up. We will have some inversions in our chords. But for now, we're dealing with root position chords. So. This is the way that many of your exercises will be presented. You will have a melody line given to you, that's the soprano line. You'll have a bass line given to you. And then your job is to fill in the alto and the tenor in logical ways. Now, sometimes you'll just be given a bass line and you'll have to come up with the soprano alto and the uh, tenor. Well, that's fine. We'll talk about that a little bit more in class. It's really not much more difficult than what we have here. Occasionally you might be given a melody line and then you have to imply from the melody what the chords might be. When you have a bass line and when you're told because of figured bass whether the chord is in root position or it's in first inversion or second inversion, it really makes it very simple. The chord is given to you. You just have to figure out how to voice it. When you have a melody and there's no figured bass and you have to pick the chords, that gets a little bit more tricky. So we'll need to deal with that a little bit in class and talk a little bit about how, you've, how you construct your own harmony from a given melody. But for now, we're dealing with a figured bass exercise. That is to say that this bass line tells you all you need to know about the chords. Well, you might say to me, but there, there's no figures on that figured bass, bass line. Well, that's absolutely true which means these must all be root position chords because, remember from the videos on figured bass, if these are root position chords, you would expect them to have 5-3 written underneath, but the convention is, rather than going through and writing 5-3 under every chord, because that's time consuming and a waste of ink, instead the convention is, if there are no figures, we assume that it is 5-3 or root position. So we would only expect to see figures if there was a first inversion or a second inversion chord, or if there was a seventh chord in there somewhere. We might then expect to see some figures. But otherwise, we would we could see it like this, and we could say we know it's a figured bass exercise, and so these must all be root position chords. It's 5-3, 5-3, 5-3, 5-3, 5-3. And that would work fine. So now let's start filling it in. Because this is a root position progression, we know that this must be the root of each chord. We must first then identify the key. Are we in F major or D minor? Really, those are our only two choices because this key signature is either F major or D minor. This piece starts with an F chord, it ends with an F chord. The chord right before the F chord is a C chord. These are root position chords. It's probably in F major. So we can say to ourselves, okay, we know that we are in F major, good. Now, if we're in F major, because these are root position chords, we should be able to go through and actually identify what each chord is. This must be an F chord, because that's the root of the chord. This must be a D minor chord. This must be a B flat major chord. Remember, there's a flat in the key signature, so B flat. This must be a C major chord. This must be an F chord at the end. Really, it makes perfect sense. That's a good solid progression. If we wanted to take this progression and we wanted to turn it into Roman numerals so we could express it more generically, what would that be? Well, in this key of F major, F is going to be 1. D minor is 6. B flat is 4. C is 5 and we get back to F1 at the end. Makes sense. 1, 6, 4, 5, 1. That's a very standard progression. There's nothing terribly tricky about that. We've encountered that last semester when we were talking about uh, 
rock and pop music and the, and the Beatles, that kind of stuff. This, this chord progression is a very solid chord progression. However, if we want to write it now in four-part harmony, if we want to write it so that it follows all the guidelines for common practice harmony, we have to be aware of a few things. We want to be aware of our voice leading guidelines. So the first, and we need to be aware of our doubling guide. So remember, there were some doublings that we would use with root position primary triads. Well, here are a lot of primary triads. And even the one triad that is not a primary triad, we will follow good voice leading guidelines. We'll be aware of where the notes are in the scale and we'll make logical decisions about what notes to put in. So let's go ahead and voice the first one. In fact, the hardest job often is voicing the first chord, and it's not that hard. And then you voice the first chord, and then everything else kind of falls into place often. So let's voice the first chord. Okay, it's a primary triad. The most often used doubling for primary triads is two roots, one third, one fifth. We have one root, one third. Perhaps we'll put another root in, and we'll put the fifth in. We know we've picked good doubling, so we've made a good decision on that. It's a primary triad, it's root position, and we've picked good doubling from our doubling guidelines that we've learned in an earlier video. So if we've put the chord in, in a right pace, then now we've got a starting point. Now from here, we just need to be concerned about where is that line of music moving? Where is this line of mu music moving? Can we keep it as smooth as possible while following good doubling guidelines and avoiding fifths and octaves. All right. So let's go through and see what we can do. If we start with uh, the next chord, we'll start with, we know we're starting here on a one chord, an F chord. Our next chord is a D minor chord. So make a note to ourselves. If this is a D minor chord, we might somewhere on another piece of paper somewhere just jot down the notes of a D minor chord. D, F, A. Now we can say to ourselves, okay, we have a D in the bass. What are our voice leading guidelines when it comes to moving from the C and the F and the A to the next chord? Well, our voice leading guidelines say, first of all, if you can repeat a note, do so. Go ahead and repeat a note. Well, the A, that's what it's doing. You can repeat the note A. The A is in the F chord. The A is also in the D minor chord. You repeat the note. Perfectly fine. Works well. So we've repeated a note, makes sense. Let's look at the F. From the note F, is there an F in the D minor chord? D, F, A, yes there is. If we can repeat a note, let's repeat it. We'll fill that one in. Okay, now let's look at the next note. There's a C. This is D, F, A. Can we, where we move, can we repeat the note C? Well, no, there is no C in this chord. So now we say to ourselves, can we move by step from C? Can we move either up to D or down to B flat? Well, there's no B flat in that chord, but there is a D. So the logical thing to do from voice leading perspective would be to move that up to a B flat, to a D, from a C to a D. That way we have created a chord. Now we can double check that chord. We can say to ourselves, well, what no? well, we actually have two roots, one third and one fifth. Well, that's a good doubling. That's a good doubling, you know, a lot of the time. Certainly doubling the sixth scale degree, that doesn't seem to hurt. It's, it's, not a, it's not particularly active. We haven't doubled the leading tone or anything like that. So this is a good solid progression so far. Now let's go on, same thing. We're gonna go to the four chord. Let's just make a note to ourselves. In this key, what is our four chord? Well, our four chord is going to be a B flat D F chord. So let's keep in mind, we've got the B flat in the bass. This has moved. If we don't have an A in this chord, so this is already moved by step. It's done the kind of logical thing. It's moved by step to a B flat. Great. Now let's say to ourselves, from here, can we find an F in this chord, B flat D? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, this may seem boring, but it's going to work. It's keeping things smooth. So great. F, F, F all the way through. No problem. If you can repeat a note, repeat a note. If you can't repeat a note, move by step. Now we say to ourselves, B flat, D, F. Can we repeat the note D? Yes, we can. So we put it in. We might just double check. Did we get all the notes in here? We got two B flats, a D and an F. That's great doubling. That's two roots, one third and one fifth. Everything's worked out great for that. So, fantastic. We followed our good voice leading guidelines where we retain notes where we can, move by step where we can, 
and we ended up with a really great doubling. So great, we're working, it's working out well. Now let's go on to the next chord, the five chord. In this key, what is our five chord? C, E, G. The five chord is C, E, G. We notice this is left down by a third, but there's nothing wrong with that. The melody might leap a bit more anyway, and a third's not exactly a large leap. Now let's look at the other two parts. From this note F, we have here C, E, and G. Well, we can't use the note F, it's not in the chord. But we could either go up to a G, we'd have both the sopranos and the altos singing that note, or down to an E. At this point in time, it could go either way, so we have to see what we want to do with this note as well. But let's try and keep four independent voices and move it down to an E at this point in time. We may have to change that depending on what we decide to do here. So now let's look at the note D. The note D, can we repeat the note D? Is there a D in the note in the chord C, E, G? No, there is no D. So we need to move either, if we can, by step, either down to a C or up to an E. Well, if we move up to an E, we will have two notes on the E. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with that, except that, in this case, we've got C, E, G, and we would have doubled the third of the chord. Not the most ideal doubling. Remember, it was the last one, the fourth possible option for doubling. So, given that we can move down by step and have a C, why don't we do that? That creates smoothness still and retains a nice full chord, which happens to have two roots, one third and one fifth. Everything seems to be working out great. Now let's go to the last one here. We've got a one chord, that's FAC again. Again, this moves up by step, no problems there. This moves down by a leap, but it's the bass. In root position chords, it's going to leap around more, we know that. So now we say to ourselves, do we have an E in this chord? Can we retain the E? Well, no, we don't. We don't have an E in this chord, it's an FAC chord. But we do have an F, and this could move up easily to that note F. Do we have a C in this chord? Well, yes, FAC, we have a C in this chord. So let's retain it. If you can retain a note, retain the note. And now we have FAC. Also, two roots, one third, one fifth. It's got great doubling. So this progression now that we have filled in should work on multiple levels. It is a solid progression in and of itself. And now, if you look at each of these lines of music, it flows beautifully from here all the way up and down. From here, nice and smooth, down and back up. From here, steps up a little bit, steps back down. The bass, as we expect, leaps around a little bit more, but right now it's really defining the harmonies. It's defining the chords because it is the, all the chords are in root position and, and the bass therefore has the job of providing the root of the chord. When we get into inversions, we'll see that smooth out a little bit. So we have produced here a great diatonic chord progression that works and functions well in the key. Your job this week is to produce two or three or four more diatonic chord progressions where you pick your chords from the diatonic chords that are available and then try and carefully voice lead them so they flow logically from one another, from one to the next to the next to the next, using your doubling guidelines and using your voice leading guidelines as a way of helping you create good solid progressions. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in class as we go on through this week. Thank you.